Big Bang. So now it is almost established uh, uh, that we have a model for the origin of our universe and Big Bang model is the one which is the most evidence in its support. Like we have Earth which is 4.5 billion light years old, we calculated its age from the radioactive dating process. So we have the Sun which is around 5 billion light years old, the quasars, uh, uh, the most distant and the oldest object found in the universe. These, uh, these are some of the old artifacts which supports the Big Bang model. The abundance of helium in the universe through the process of nucleosynthesis observations of the Hubble's law and the cosmic microwave background measurements are some of the direct evidences which supports the Big Bang. And uh, the presence of uh, the presence of quasars uh, uh, which are known to be the most distant and luminous objects of the universe confirms that the universe has its early history. So uh, the discovery of quasar indicates that the activity of quasar was at its peak epoch in very early stage that was around like 13 billion light years. So the latest quasar observed is in the mass 2021. So uh, you can see the uh, pictures of some of the quasars. So basically uh, the observation of quasars gives uh, uh, the notion that the universe appears to have an early history. So that is why its, uh, it's, uh, its observation is uh, the direct evidence for uh, the Big Bang model. Next, uh, we have the nucleosynthesis is the process through which the hydrogen and helium uh, were formed during the nuclear epoch of nuclear era and atomic epoch of matter era of the evolution of the universe, where they fused together to form all the other existing elements of the present universe. So according to the model, uh, at certain state of the evolution, the neutrons were decayed into proton. So all the neutrons were decayed into protons. The red one are the protons and blue one are the neutrons. So this, uh, the protons into neutrons decayed much faster than the protons. So given rise to more number of protons than neutrons. Later, these few neutrons uh, combine uh, with protons to form the helium atom and the rest of the protons becomes the hydrogen atom. So you can see from the plot that uh, uh, the W map observation uh, uh, gives, uh, the, which is the Wilkinson microwave anastropy probe satellite, is, is fitting here is uh, this line. So uh, uh, this gives that the hydrogen and that this is helium and hydrogen uh, uh, accounts for nearly all the matter in the today's universe, and the relative abundance of uh, hydrogen is 73% by mass as compared to the helium which is 25 percent by mass so all these are consistent with the big bang model now uh, let us talk about uh, the most distance and the oldest things we can see uh, as it happens that we cannot see the moment the universe begin just because uh, the early universe was so hot and dense that even light could not pass through it we can think of it as a sort of fog. However, there was a moment about uh, 380,000 years after the Big Bang when the universe was so cool enough to become clear. The temperature at which it happens is around 300 Kelvin. Everywhere, uh, actually, uh, sorry, this is 3000 Kelvin. Everywhere in the universe, the temperature was identical and, and this temperature, it was, it was growing hot. So uh, this is where the expansion of the space comes in. Since then, the universe is being expanding and cooling and even in stretching a space. Uh, this moment was about uh, uh, to the blink of an eye, but this moment can, uh, can be seen by a radio antenna uh, capable of detecting the microwaves. Why microwave, we will uh, discuss it later. And, but for that reason, the oldest thing we can actually see is the cosmic microwave background radiation. So uh, uh, this SEMB is very important and interesting part of the evidence, uh, which has several implications on the shape and age of the universe. So, uh, so the cosmic microwave background radiation is uh, thought to be a fainted leftover radiation from the Big Bang or the time when the universe began, became, uh, began that fills the universe, uh, falling 
on the earth from every direction with nearly uniform density uh, so as the theory goes when the universe was born it underwent a rapid inflation and expansion but the universe is still expanding today and the expansion rate appears different depending on where you are uh, uh, the microwave uh, background represents the heat left over from uh, from that Big Bang. The afterglow of the Big Bang is streaming through a space. These last 14 billion years, like the heat from the sun, uh, warm the rocks when it re re uh, radiated at night. So uh, uh, you. You cannot see uh, the microwave background with your naked eyes, but it is everywhere in the universe. It is invisible to human because it is so cold. It is so cold. Just uh, it is 2.7 uh, degrees above the absolute zero. This means it, it its radiation is most visible in the microwave part of the electromagnetic spectrum. As I said, that is why uh, it is named cosmic microwave background radiation. The discovery of uh, the microwave background goes like this. Around uh, 1965, two scientists, Penzias and Wilkinson, Wilson, uh, working with a radio telescope in Bell Labs, New Jersey, receive a peculiar uh, noise. At first, they thought that it is due to some local disturbance. So uh, they tried to fix everything, but still there remained an, an annoying level, low level statistic coming from all directions all times of the day through all the seasons so uh, let us go back a little we know that when we heat any object it start to glow uh, and emit radiation with the wavelength characteristics of their temperature so uh, this is known as black body radiation so since we know that the early universe was so hot and dense that even light could not pass through it, therefore we expect uh, the universe should radiate as a black body. Uh, so you can see that different uh, different radiation black body spectrum of the different black body radiation with different temperatures. So uh, universe we should. Um, uh, expect that the universe should radiate in, as a black body if it is hot and if it is radiating then the large redshift should stretch the wavelength and uh, with this idea uh, uh, Penzias and Wilson's realized that what they had detected was actually the cosmic microwave background which was predicted by the Big Bang theory we must analyze and detect these radiations of the universe with the condition that uh, this microwave background must correspond to the radiation from a black body uh, which is at a temperature of nearly 3 Kelvin coming from all directions. So, uh, we know that uh, the hot universe as it existed about 380,000 years after the Big Bang was uh, at temperature of about 3000 Kelvin. But the shift of the spectrum of the microwave background from 3000 to 3K is, is, has to be there uh, due to an enormous redshift, which we know as cosmological redshift. So uh, this is what we get different from the different satellite at different times has given us from the sky survey. This is from the COBE in 1992. WMAP 2003 and Planck's the latest one is 2003. COVE is the Cosmic uh, Background Explorer. WMAP is the Wilkinson's Microwave uh, Anisotropy Probe and this is the Planck 2003. So uh, so you can see this is the bigger picture, the latest picture one. Uh, the fit to uh, the Cosmic Background data from this uh, COBE satellite is a perfect black body spectrum of temperature T2.74 uh, Kelvin. So this cosmic uh, microwave background is a perfect black body radiation with a temperature of uh, 3000 Kelvin. On the earth we see that the CMB has a black body temperature of 2.7 Kelvin. So this temperature is almost same everywhere. The temperature of the universe in the current days is 2.7 Kelvin. So, so that's the first 
big thing but but we have learned that uh, there are very small variations in the temperature of the universe these variations are really incredibly tiny the hottest and coldest spots are only hundredth of a percent different from the average temperature our current best measurement about these variations comes from the telescope in a space called this Planck uh, this from this 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 map the astronomer using the Planck observatory have measured the entire sky and the map of these temperature variation which we see which we see here we see that the blue spots are colder than the average and the red spots are hotter so these temperature differences are there but do they have to do anything with the size of the universe let us see it turns out uh, uh, it turns out that uh, that these variations were caused by the sound waves in uh, hot universe so when the universe was very hot so uh, because of that sound wave uh, these variations are there just be before it becomes transparent and because we know that the temperature of the universe was at that time we can uh, measure the total amount of matter that we see in the universe so we can also calculate the wavelength of these sound waves the sound in the early universe is pretty much the same as the sound we hear now so uh, we know the fact the sound is transmitted through the variation in the density of air and you can measure the variety of frequency so when sound travels through a different density uh, there is a variation in this frequency and the corresponding wavelength so in the early universe due to the region of higher and the lower density the sound wave results in hotter and colder spots in the cosmic microwave background radiations given there we know the wavelength of the louder sound waves in the universe before it becomes transparent we can calculate the angular size of the most common size of hot and cold spot in this microwave background uh, picture further we can calculate what size is the most likely and it should be one degree as we from earth so you must remember that it should be one degree as we from the earth so okay now uh, we are getting somewhere so we have firm prediction of the size of hot and cold spot which brings us closer to the question that what is the size of the universe so now that prediction of one degree uh, depend on the shape of the shape of the universe remember that Einstein general theory of relativity says that the space and time can bend uh, uh, and mold so we have seen it so a uh, space would be one in variety of different shapes it is hard to imagine a space in three dimensions so let us uh, let us substitute this in two dimension analogy so uh, you can see that a 2d a 2d flat space is like the surface of a table the flat means flat uh, with with zero curvature but a 2d space could be a surface of a square where you kept on walking and and, and you end up back where you started so this is called a closed space with a positive curvature another possibility is the 2d space uh, could be like a saddle or a hyperbolic this is an example of what is called an open space and uh, with a negative curvature so uh, those are the basic possibilities uh, of the shape of the uh, space so how does that fit in our questions uh, so it comes down to the fact that light travels in a straight line in a space but if the space is curved then everything gets folded so uh, let us see uh, the hot and cold spot of uh, in CMB to see what I mean so if a space is flat and if the spot in the CMB is one degree wide then we get one degree when we measure it this is a, a simple geometry uh, that straight line travels a straight line but that behavior does not apply everywhere why because if we suppose that the two ends start traveling on a flat space they stay at the same fixed distance apart but on a closed space they will run into each other and on an open space they eventually diverge and gets further apart 
So this has consequences when measuring the apparent size of uh, these distance spot in the microwave background radiation. So in, in, in flat space, if we get a complete, uh, we get a complete triangle. But uh, uh, the distorted triangle in case of curved space, as you can see. So you see the sum of the angles is equal to 180 degree when the space is flat, but it is greater than for a closed space will be greater than and for the open space it, it has to be less than this. So now the telescope cannot see the whole path the light traveled. So all you see is the angle of the light coming into your eyes. So in the flat space the angle measured to be exactly one degree but in the close or spherical space being greater than expected and the angle in open space is being smaller than the expected. So uh, this is uh, greater than one degree has to be, and this is less than one degree. So let us let us apply this to the spot of the background radiation. So uh, we will see that the spot that are one degree in flat space will be different in curved space. So this is perfect way to test that whether the space is flat or curved. So in a flat space, uh, the dominant size of the spot should be one degree but uh, in the curve or close uh, the spot should look bigger if the curve is open the spot should look smaller so what did Planck and other experiment find and that the measurement found that the size of the spot is one degree so from that we conclude that the space is flat so so from uh, from this uh, CMB, uh, which Planck's have uh, measured, and the observations, different observation and measurement, uh, it has been found that the, the different spots are, when we see from the Earth, is exactly one degree. So from that, we conclude that the space is flat. Or can we say it with certain? But that is an inconclusive statement. So we can say that a space appear to be flat, or measurement is consistent with the space with the curvature less than like 25.25 percent so here you can see that inflation uh, inflation that the, the the rapid expansion of a thing can solve the flatness problem because a heavily curved region of the space can be made to look flat if the radius increases you can see here so here the uh, the curve the space is not flat but as the radius increases the radius of the balloon increases this you can see that the region is flat and the observable universe is like being look like a flat so if the space is flat then the universe is infinite in extent and our visible universe is just a small bubble in the infinite sea of the universe similarly if the space is like a circle or hyperbolic or open space this is also infinite but what if the space is like a closed uh, shape like a sphere so but so big that it's look flat like the earth can look flat so in this case space is not infinite it is of finite size now uh, we are getting somewhere supposing if the universe is closed uh, then how big it is then you do a careful analysis using the maximum and possible curvature allowed by the best measurement and you find that the universe is no smaller than the 250 times bigger than the visible universe so the, if this is our visible universe and then this outside this visible universe this could be 250 times bigger than the visible universe so uh, we know that uh, that uh, this from here to here the visible universe is 92 billion light years so this is 250 times bigger than the visible universe so now we have the number for the age and size of the universe so uh, uh, the evidence that the universe began with the big bang is very compelling uh, 
13.8 billion years ago, the entire universe was compressed into a microscopic singularity uh, like this that grew exponentially into the vast cosmos we see today. But what does the future hold? How will the universe end? Astronomers have been pondering uh, the ultimate fate of the universe for thousands of years and it is found that the fate of the universe depends on how much mass and energy is there in the universe. Okay, uh, so it actually depends on how much mass and energy is there uh, in the universe. So, uh, but the astronomer, uh, uh, what they do, they uh, they uh, like to work mostly with the ratio. So in this case, we have the ratio of energy density over the critical density called uh, the density parameter, which is omega naught. So this is energy density and this is critical density. And basically omega is the omega naught is the radiation, omega due to radiation, due to matter and due to the curvature of the space. So uh, the critical density is going to play uh, um, a very important role in deciding the fate of the universe. So three possibilities are there uh, to the fate of the universe and, and that we can look for. Uh, so critical density is defined as the density which gives us the flat universe. So that is omega naught is equal to one. This is rho by rho naught. So the critical density is basically defined from here. The density which gives us the flat universe. That means the omega naught is equal to 1 and the universe will be uh, flat. Okay, and uh, has to be infinite. And the, finally, the universe will just barely manage to expand forever. Because it's flat. And uh, what uh, if the density is any more than the critical density, we have the omega naught greater than 1. And uh, this, uh, then, then we have a, a close, a close uh, space, closed universe, and it has to be a finite. Uh, in this case, the universe will eventually expand to certain extent, and then it will collapse. So the, the universe will e eventually collapse. So if the density any less than the critical density, this omega naught is less than one, then we have open space or the saddle or a hyperbolic. This situation is where uh, the, uh, the universe uh, will be infinite and the end will be like the universe will expand forever to the infinite time. Uh, so let us understand it uh, with the plot uh, between the relative size of the universe as a function of its age. So this, this yellow curve uh, corresponds to the rho greater than the critical density. So if the critical density was high, then there was enough mutual gravity to, uh, to slow down, uh, to slow down uh, the expansion. It will expand and uh, the enough mutual gravity will slow down this expansion and uh, within the billions of years in future, it, it, would, it would then collapse in on itself again. So from start from here, it will expand and then it will collapse. So perhaps uh, creating another Big Bang. So uh, from here, then it can it, it can go again, create a Big Bang and then expand and then. So this is known as the closed universe. And the final result is known as the Big Crunch. That is that it will expand and then finally go to a black hole and similarity. So. Uh, this is this is known as the big crunch. You can see the big crunch is expanded, and then 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 finally. Okay, uh, the videos are not uh, going. So the concentrate on this. Uh, uh, blue curve where the rho is less than the critical density. If the critical density was low, then there wouldn't be enough gravity to hold things together. So it is this case. So expansion would continue on forever and ever. A star, stars would die, galaxy would be 
so this will be expanding forever and ever in in that expansion ultimately what will happen that stars would die galaxy would be separated apart is uh, spread apart and everything uh, would cool down to the background temperature of the universe so and this is uh, this is an open universe and the end is known as the big freeze uh, in which uh, uh, in both of the cases uh, the, if the universe is also flat so this is also going to be uh, I mean the critical density was just right the universe expansion goes on forever so uh, and um, ultimately it slowed down reaching a dead stop in an infinite amount of time so this also creates a flat universe and the end is also a big freeze so big freeze this is expanding but 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 it expanding getting slowing down expanding expanding not slowing down but but uh, what will happen the expansion continue forever and ever so the star would die galaxy would be spread apart and everything will cool down to the background temperature and uh, we will we will see nothing so this is a, a big freeze so this is uh, this is uh, just another way to represent the fate of the universe uh, with time. So we have Big Bang uh, and the universe is expanding. New galaxies are formed in case of closed universe. It will reach a maximum expansion based on the gravitational nature. It will start to contract and finally it was the black hole as, as a similarity point. But in case of open universe, it will keep on expanding forever, infinite expansion. But before moving further uh, with certain conclusion, let us ask uh, what is the shape of the universe? Fortunately, astronomers uh, were able uh, to measure the critical density of the universe uh, using the NASA's WMAP spacecraft and they discovered that the actual density of the universe predicts a flat universe. So, so, so that's right. So a universe is flat. And of the three choices for the universe fate, the universe is going towards the fate of a big freeze. Uh, unfortunately, the universe had other plans and came up with a reality that nobody expected. We know that in 1998, a team of astronomers were uh, observing distant supernova to get a sense of how fast the universe is slowing down and they made an amazing discovery. They had found that instead of decelerating the, as predicted by the critical density of the universe, the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up or accelerating. So the some mysterious forces pushing galaxies faster and faster away from each other, accelerating an expansion of the universe. So we now call uh, this force as the dark energy. And for the time being, astronomers have no idea what it is. All we know is that it is pushing the universe apart. So the distant galaxies are being accelerated away from us and in trillions of years from now they will cross beyond the cosmic horizon and disappear from the view. So the evidence that we live in a vast universe will disappear with them. So there is a, a strong uh, evidence today that the universe is uh, uh, being dominated by the dark energy. Not only this balances the gravity, but it apparently dominates it. So if the dark energy will apparently dominate the gravity, then what will happen? What if the expansion overwhelms the gravity? Galaxy will get torn apart and then solar system and eventually atoms themselves will be shredded by the increasing dark energy. And this idea is known as the big rip. So, uh, so this is another fate of the universe. Uh, this is, uh, that is how uh, uh, the universe may end also. So this is another way to represent all the fate of the universe based on the observation of the type 1 supernovas. This is the, this is the Hubble, Hubble telescope observing these supernovas. We are here in the present, in the present uh, uh, universe. The observation of the movement of these supernovas I will decide which that the which curve blue red or pink the universe is going to choose the big, big crunch in which the dark energy ultimately uh, weaken over the dark matter 
and the gravity will cause the universe to collapse. Or if the dark energy dominates over the dark matter, which is quite possible, then the dark energy will speed up uh, the universe uh, expansion, causing it to break apart suddenly. And that is that is the big reap. But uh, uh, however, uh, uh, in the constant expansion case, the universe will keep on expanding uh, more gradually in balance with the gravity and finally may lead to a, a big freeze death of the universe. So uh, still we do not know how exactly the universe will end and all we know is uh, theories but it is for sure that the physics of dark energy will determine the fate of the universe. So uh, concluding uh, my lecture, I would uh, list out some important points here that the Big Bang model describes our current understanding of the universe. The universe looks like a cosmic web. It is around 13.8 billion years old. And and these are the 75, 3% is the dark energy, 23% is the dark matter, and only 4% of the observable universe we are, we are looking for. So uh, it uh, shapes of the universe is flat, dark matter fills the universe, it is causing the expansion, and the Hubble constant is you know, 71 kilometer per second, per megaparsec and it is accelerating and the responsible is the dark energy for the acceleration and it will expand forever. So uh, the Big Bang model of our uh, uh, current understanding of the universe is a strong, so well supported model. It takes into account all observed evidence and no evidence has yet been found that contradicts it. Although it is the most complete model, but we have to explain how the universe works. There are still questions that remains for scientists and for humanity. So now we know somewhat detailed picture of how the universe behaved just moments after the Big Bang, but absolutely nothing about the moments before it. We know about the expansion of the universe and its changing nature, but still cannot predict its fate. So pushing technology to its limit, many new experiments with new generation probes and telescopes designed to study the inflation, black holes, and dark energy are coming up together, offering new evidences to further develop our model of universe. The observations from these exciting missions will continue to expand our views of space and time. Thank you.